In the previous lecture, we have learned about different types of systems. We have introduced the concept of linearity in the previous lecture. Now, before moving ahead, let's discuss and learn about some basic signals that would help us in analyzing the systems. The first basic signal that we are going to look at is what is called as a unit impulse signal. Now this unit impulse signal exists in both the scenarios for the discrete time case and for the continuous time case. Let's look at the discrete time case first due to its simplicity. So an impulse signal and unit impulse signal looks something like this. So if this is the axis. The unit's impulse signal is located or do exist only at n equals to zero. So I'm considering the case of discrete time signal. So the unit impulse exists only at n equals to zero. For n equals to zero, the value is one. Whereas for other values of n, it is zero. So if you have the grid lines, for other values of n, so it exists only for n equals to 0 and for other values, it is simply 0. It is 0, 0, 0, and so on. So you can define that as follows. So it defines with the symbol of del of n. This del of n is 1 at n equals to 0, but is 0 for n not equals to 0. So for, for remaining values of n, it remains zero. So such signal is called as a unit impulse signal. This is being indicated by del of n. It is a function of n, small n. Now this very simple signal and forms a very fundamental block for analyzing signals or systems. As we have this unit impulse signal for the discrete time case, we can have a similar kind of unit impulse signal for the continuous time case. So for the continuous time case, I'm drawing on the right. For the continuous time case, the unit impulse is not that straightforward design or defined. So the unit impulse in case of the continuous time signal is defined in a similar way, but quite unusually. So it is defined as, I would write the mathematical expression first. So it is defined as del of t is not equals to zero at t equals to zero. However, it is zero for t not equals to 0. Then what is the value at t equals to 0? Well, at t equals to 0, del of t approaches infinite at t equals to 0. Therefore, this signal can be looked at as a kind of signal that appears to be something like this. So it is approaching infinity at t equals to zero. We do indicate that 
with an arrow something like this and we indicate that with a function as del of t you can see that it is defined at only the zeroth instance of time so it exists and it vanishes within no time so this is quite unusual signal that we can hardly generate we cannot generate such kind of signals in practice but this mathematical equations do help us in analyzing the systems this is also called as a dirac delta function in fact this is not a function as we can see that this signal is defined at only zeroth instance so it's there and it vanishes within no time so it is not a function as for function the signal must be existing or must be well defined for each and every values of t here it is not defined at zero we can simply say that it is approaching infinite at t equals to zero and for rest of the values of t it is simply zero an important property of this unit impulse is that this unit impulse is having the area the area as one so if you have integration of or the area over this impulse it is going to be one therefore this is called as a unit impulse we indicate that with one being indicated as a height to this impulse so here this one does not mean the amplitude of this impulse it simply means that the area of this impulse is one now it's very difficult to understand this signal because uh, it's something that is quite weird it simply approaches infinite and that too within no time how can such signals exist so let's look at some closest approximation to this impulse the continuous time impulse signal for that purpose consider the pulse something like this so let's have a pulse that is having a width of say delta so i'm saying that the width of this pulse here is say delta and let the height be 1 by delta and let's assume that this pulse is located right there in the middle so we have this as a function of t and the center being zero now let's try to modify this pulse in such a way that the area under this pulse remains the same so what is the area now area here is 1 just because the width is delta and the height is 1 by delta if i modify the pulse such that the width is reduced but the height is increased in such a way that the area under this remains the same so here also if we assume that the width here to be say del 2 or let it be again a new delta del 2 and the height also let it be a in such a way that the height is simply the inverse of the width so that is going to be 1 by delta 2 so if we 
make this delta or the width tending to zero so if you have something like this if you have delta or delta 2 to approach zero this width here the width of the pulse will go on reducing and if we retain the area to be one the height would increase so as we reduce the width as del tends to zero at certain point this will grow infinitely and would result in a signal something like this so such signal can be thought of as a approximation to the impulse signal so the impulse can impulse function here can be thought of as an approximation of this impulse or this or this pulse here where this del is tending to zero so this is the the impulse in the disc in the continuous time case this is a unit impulse signal for continuous time case so this is the continuous time case where the previous one that we have seen on the left is for the discrete time case we can see that the discrete time impulse is very well defined and does not have that kind of complexity as do we have in the continuous time case let's look at another basic signal the next signal that we are going to look at is what is called as a unit step signal so unit step signal this unit step signal is defined something like this it is defined by the notation u of t this signal is 1 for all the values of n greater than or equal to 0 whereas it is 0 otherwise so it appears something like this it actually is 0 all the while and from 0 onwards it is 1 so the signal looks something like this from 0 onwards it is 1 so for every value of n greater than or equal to 0 it is 1 and for rest of the values it remains 0 and this continues so this value is 1 and this is a function of n where this is u of n so here yes uh, there is a that is u of n there is a mistake here it is not u of t it is u of n I am defining the signal for the discrete time case so it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on here minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and so on similarly we can define the unit step signal in the continuous time case so for continuous time case We define the unit step signal in a similar fashion so we have u of t equals to u of t is 1 
for all the values of t greater than or equals to 0 not equals to greater than 0 and is 0 for t less than 0 whereas at t equals to 0 it is undefined this is similar to the impulse there is a problem in defining the unit step function so this is undefined as t equals to 0 so if I try to draw the signal it looks something like this so if we try to plot the signal we see that it appears something like this as we define the signal as 1 for all the values of t greater than 0 and it is 0 for the values of t less than 0 so here the axis here the horizontal axis is t this is u of t and the height here is 1 you can see that this signal undergoes a sudden change in the value therefore this value here at t equals to 0 is undefined now this again is a problem a continuous time unit step signal is not well defined at t equals to 0 it, there is an ambiguity there so as we have seen the approximation for the impulse we can also make a similar kind of approximation for the unit step signal so we can approximate the signal to appear something like this so we may see that the signal can be approximated something like this so instead of starting the signal very sharply we start the signal quite smoothly like this so instead of having a sudden transition we define this transition to be a linear, linear and let this slope be for very small duration let that slope be for say the duration of let's say del and the height remains the same as that of 1 now how can we relate this signal with the impulse signal we can see that this turns out to be the unit step signal if del tends to 0 so if del tends to 0 we can see that there is a sharp transition and this signal gets approximated to u of t so the new signal that we have drawn here let's name that as u del of t is the closest approximation to the unit step signal for the continuous time case so practically we can see or interpret the unit step signal being approximated by something like this now that we have learned about these two basic signals the unit impulse and the unit step signal let's define relationship between them an interesting relationship between these two basic signals is as follows let's consider the discrete time case first we have defined del of n that is the discrete time impulse to be 1 for n equals to 0 and that is 0 otherwise we have defined u of n to be 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and is 0 for n less than 0 now we can see that there is exists some relationship between these two signals as can be observed from the graphs of these signals 
you can see that del of n exists only at n equals to 0 whereas u of n exists for all the values for n greater than or equal to 0. So how can we relate u of n to del of n? We can easily see that this del of n is equals to u of n minus u of n minus 1. So what we are doing here, we are simply taking u of n, we are taking its shifted version and we are subtracting them. So we have u of n and we are subtracting u of n minus 1 from this u of n. So all the samples from 1 onwards will be subtracted and we are left with only the sample that is there at n equals to 0. So that's the relation between the impulse, the discrete time impulse and the discrete unit step signal. Similarly, we can define u of n in terms of del of n. If we observe this u of n very carefully, we can see that th this is as good as del of n being repeated at various values of n. So if we have this del of n, we have del of say the shifted impulses and that too for all the values of shifts. Now that those shifts are there from k equals to 0 till infinite. So if you have various values of shifted impulses right from the shift for k equals to 0 till shift of k equals to infinite, we can have u of n signal. So as we can see that this u of n is simply the del of n being repeated at each and every values of n. Therefore we can define u of n as a summation of impulses, uh, shifted impulses, where the shift is defined with integers from k equals to 0 to infinite. Similarly, for the continuous time case, we can define the relationship. As we have seen that del of t here in the continuous time case is infinite, is actually approaching infinite for n equals to 0 and del of t is 0 for n not equals to 0. Similarly, we have defined u of t as being 1 for t greater than 0 and being 0 for t less than 0. Similar kind of relationship exists between the unit step signal for the continuous case and the unit impulse signal for the continuous case. The relationship is something like this. Del of t as we have seen for the discrete time case is the first difference operation. For the continuous time case it is simply the derivative of u of t. first order derivative. Similarly, u of t is integration from minus infinite to t del of tau d tau. As we can see from here, this u of t is a kind of integrating the impulse at t equals to 0. So we can see a clear kind of analogy between the continuous time case and the discrete time case. For the discrete time case we have this the unit impulse signal as 
the first difference operation between the unit step signal. Similarly, for the continuous time case, we have the impulse signal to be first differentiation of the unit step signal. In the other case, we have this unit step signal for the discrete time case to be summation of the impulse signal, the shifted impulses. Similarly, we have the same scenario, the similar kind of scenario in the continuous time case. For the continuous time case, we have u of t, the unit step signal for the continuous time case to be an integration. So here the summation is replaced by the integration here. So it's a running integral from minus infinite to t over the impulse, the continuous impulse signal. So there's a clear cut analogy between the discrete time signals and the continuous time signals. We shall see more into this in the next module. Thank you.